Father in heaven, we would like to invite your holy presence to be in our midst today as we study the lesson five, the blessings of the righteous. Thank you for your Holy Spirit dwelling in us at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'd like to welcome you to our lesson five, the blessings of the righteous. Now let us define some terms. There are two terms that are very outstanding in our lesson for this week. I have uh, written there. The first one is, how do we define blessings? We have definition of blessings from the secular perspective, but what about from the biblical perspective? So I have tried a little research, and uh, blessings comes from the Hebrew word beracha. It's a feminine noun, and one of the meanings there is praise of God, a treaty of peace, and also, I forgot, I'll just put it here, it's a gift. That's the, uh, that's the Hebrew rendition of the word blessings. So some of us have, a, some of have an understanding of what blessings is. That's why we always say, God bless you. Uh, so what does that really mean? It means that you are going to be prosperous? or From the secular definition of blessings, if you can find it in the dictionary, it says favor of God. But when I looked into the Hebrew root, it's the blessing is, is somehow like the action of kneeling. It's kneeling. It's a salute of God. It's, it's a praise not of men, but it's a praise of God. That's the word beracha, a feminine noun. Now, there, our, our memory verse is in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. If you compare the word blessings, the Hebrew word that is used there, you can find the first word that I saw, that I see, I mean, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, the word blessings there in the context of God's covenant relationship statement to who? To Abraham. God specifically used the word blessings, which means beracha, which means the praise of God, a treaty of peace between Abraham and God, and God's gift to, to, uh, God's gift to Abraham, I mean. So this is in, 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 in consonant with, with the, the word blessing. So that's just the first definition of blessing. Now let's go to the word, the, the word righteous. We have an idea of what the righteous is. Are you righteous? Am I righteous? You might be asking that question. So yeah, we have definitely different definitions, but I'd like to highlight what the biblical definition, especially the Hebrew, it comes from the Hebrew word sadek. Uh, it, it's an adjective. You know what is an adjective, right? Um, it, uh, it means just. Just. When you say just, it also means you're fair. Huh? He is a just king. Or he is a just judge. He is a judge person. A just person, I mean. Another meaning from the Hebrew sense is lawful. Okay, you got that? The word righteous could also mean Correct. How many of us here would like to be correct all the time? And how many of us here are correcting people who are, whom we think are wrong? So it means we are righteous. All right? If we are correct. Justified or vindicated by God. Remember, this is not the vindication of men. This is the vindication of God. So meaning to say, who qualifies you to be a righteous? Is it man or is it God? It's God. It's the vindication of God. I would just like to highlight this. It's, it's God who is vindicating or justifying. Now, if you compare Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6, of the usage of the word in Hebrew, sadek, righteous, the first um, story that comes to mind is Genesis 6, verse 9. What is that story in Genesis 6, verse 9? Could somebody remember? Genesis 6 verse 9 is the story of Noah. God making a statement to Noah. Noah was a sadek. Noah was a righteous. In other translation, Noah was a just man. Could you believe Noah could be a just man if you have not, writ if you have not read the last few chapters about him getting drunk? Would you say he was a just man? He was not, but God qualifies. Again, it's the work of God. It's the, God, it's the pronouncement of God the vindication and justification of God to pronounce a person righteous. Who pronounced person righteous? Is it us? Yeah. It's God. But we have our own definition of who is righteous and who is unrighteous. Interesting that there are people who, 
who takes that uh, prerogative to, 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 although in our secular setting, people will say, ah, okay, you are correct. Okay, you are not correct in the secular setting. So these are the two definition of terms that I would like us to begin. Now, there are three outlines that I would like us to bring home and as we share oh, with our uh, Sabbath school classes um, next Sabbath. I find it there. Uh, what I mean is I, I research and I've, I try to um, um, uh, relate this in three parts. The first one is the biblical principles of the righteous. The second outline is the blessings of the righteous. And the third is becoming righteous. Are you interested to become righteous? All right, let's continue the journey. Let's make this uh, as, uh, as a journey together as we try to understand the blessings of the righteous person. Could a righteous be um, only male? So therefore, the right, uh, women or female could also be righteous. But most of the time in the Bible, because of the strong patriarchal um, culture, it's usually God pronounced men as just. But there were also instances in the prophetess that they were just. But the Bible is very clear. All right, so let us go to the first principle. I'd like us to read some Bible. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1 to 14. Let's open our Bibles together. This is our text. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 1 to 14. I would like you to um, uh, hold on to that. And let's examine the principles of the righteous. This is the, what I call, is the question, we are addressing the question is who? Who, uh, who? who are affected by the actions or who are those uh, giving or doing the actions. All right. Biblical principles of the righteous. The first one there is right choice is rewarded. Let us, you know, I found out in this 14 verses in Proverbs 10, verses 1 to 14, that uh, right cho choice is rewarded not because of a reward for ourselves. Not only, I mean, I'm sorry, not only a reward for others. But especially, right choice is a reward for whom? God. For, for, yeah, from God, but for ourselves. I found it out in, in the following verses. It has an impact on self. Chapter 10, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, 6, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 14. Why? Let us prove this. Right choice is rewarded. Would you agree? Yeah, all right. Let's go to verse, let's see, verse 2. Uh, I would like to read Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2. Treasures of the, pro of the wickedness profit nothing, but, del but righteousness delivers from death. Who benefits? Or who, uh, what I mean is, who is being impacted here? This statement is towards who? Who is, who is uh, delivered from death? The other person? You. The righteous man who is right, who is correct, who is just. So meaning to say, you're, we're concerned of others as well. Don't get me wrong. But definitely, if you're righteous, actually, guess, guess what? You're saving yourself from death. You follow? So if you make the right choices, meaning to say, you are delivering yourself from death. Here comes verse 3. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish. What is famish? Hungry. Hungry. All right, so what does the next verse say? But he cast away the desire of the wicked. He contrasts between the righteous and the wicked. What happens to the righteous? He will not be malnourished. Okay, there will be a lot of questions here later on, but please hold your... This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that the righteous will not be famished. But what will happen to the, to the unrighteous or to those who are not just? They will be cast... Their desires will be cast away wow so meaning to say their desires will not be be heard by god so now from this uh, a few verses would you agree with me that one of the principles that i found with the righteous is that they they make the right choice and it is rewarded now i'm not saying we are we are all, we are doing the right thing because we wanted to receive uh, reward that uh that is a part of being a righteous. You are rewarded. So, my question is this. 
on the principle, biblical principles of the righteous, do you do what is right? Do you are, are you doing what is right? Hmm? What are okay before that? What are what is the basis of our do, right doing? Why do we do right? Why do we do right? Anybody? Everyone is seems silent. I hope uh, you're you're getting into it. Why are we doing right? We're children of God. We are children of God. We've been born again. Born again, amen. Why are we doing right? Because again, this is a principle. We save ourselves. Consciously or unconsciously. We also save ourselves. Because doing right delivers you from death. Remember? Doing wrong will deliver you to death. Now, for example, um, the previous uh, lessons that we have is, or the previous lessons that I led is about uh, uh, stealing and adultery. If you do those uh, forbidden in the commandments of God, what will happen to you? Death will surely be on your doorsteps. Right? Either death to spiritual life or physical death. Somebody will kill you for stealing his or her spouse. Right? So, the biblical principle number one is right choice is rewarded. Do we do what is right? Not, <laughs> not all the time. Well, that's very human. Not all the time. Okay, the second principle is this. Crime does not pay. In verses 1, the Bible says of chapter 10, A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. To me, I see that as crime does not really pay. Do you believe in what um, what the script uh, what the scripture is saying that be sure your sins will not find you out because sin will find you out? Have you had that? Uh, 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 can you relate to that moment when uh, the sins are you know when 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 somebody asks I like to talk to you you feel like you know you feel like uh oh what did I do wrong? You know, you feel like you feel like you're guilt, or you're remembering what you have done, because you don't want to be known or to be caught that you have done something, right? So the the, the principle is sin will show itself. So we have to keep the word. The third is people will respond to goodness. Do you do you agree with this? People will respond to goodness. I like to show you in verse ten of chapter ten. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. How many of the great names do you know that are seen as just person? I could think one, Abraham Lincoln's name. Is he a just person? The way I see it, he was because he was remembered by uh, millions of people. He was a just person. And uh, another... Um, a just uh, person uh, that is being honored is uh, MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. He 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 was he's being uh, in more uh, me, uh, memorialized every January. What's that? Third week, nineteen. Is it nineteen? Yeah. So the Bible says the memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. How many of you here knows the name of Al Capone? So. <laughs> So when you hear his name, it, it's it has a different it has a negative uh, connotation to that to that name. It's it's the opposite of the blessedness of having a good name. So these are the three principles that I find from Proverbs chapter ten verses one to fourteen. Right choice is rewarded, no doubt. The second is crime does not pay. The third is people respond to goodness. He that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow, <laughs> but breaking fools shall fall. Okay, do you wink your eye? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if I want to... Oh, who do you wink your eye to? <laughs> <laughs> and why are you winking your eye? <laughs> Well, I think, uh, what's the, uh, uh, that, cause can anybody uh, know what is winking of an eye? It, to me, it's just a freighting fool's action or a gesture of a freighting fool. Like a, you're, you're, 
it's like a, it's a is, is it a jester or a jesting um, uh, it's a joke. yeah it's a freighting fool freighting fool a definition of uh, of winking we, right now it's just famous we, you wink your eye it has a it has a, if you wink your eyes just like that right uh -huh. it has a different uh, uh, understanding I, I think the winking of the eye is if you, if you, if you look at uh, no what if you link just just uh, praise some some somebody that who who whoever, <laughs> whoever. Lady, so you wink your eye to one of us here no a lady or a man it's it's the same so you wink your eye with a man as well that's yeah a bad, that's a bad connotation it has a bad connotation for some what, what is what is yeah. bad in there exactly. especially if you're with, uh, for example you're dealing with somebody okay but it, it comes out good you wink in your eye is that is that is that is that wrong well i don't know your motive why you wink yeah. your eye if you oh, well that's what i'm saying yeah if, if you wink if you wink. but the bible is very clear he who winks he or she winks it his or her eyes causes trouble, trouble. Yeah. So, so my question is wink, have you caused wink. trouble by winking your eye <laughs> not yet okay so but the freighting fool will will fall the, 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 the context of the winking of the eye in verse 11 is mischief <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> but but you are not mischief all right but you just wink your eye because this is the, the first time I, uh, I you read that. Oh, yeah. that's the first yeah, you time. You have to understand it in context, guys. Right. So does it necessarily apply to what the weekend could say? Yeah. yeah. Actually, in the Good News Bible says, "Someone who holds back the truth causes trouble, but one who openly criticizes works for peace." Yeah. Well, the King James Version is a little bit uh, a classic uh, uh, rendition yeah, of the absolutely. of the Hebrew. So winking of the eye is uh, within the context of doing uh, causing something no, for generally trouble. Generally speaking, uh, I, I don't no, see I don't anything know, like wrong with it. Okay, you don't see. That's your that's your take on that. All right, but the Bible is very clear. I'll go with the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uphold the Bible. What the Bible yeah, says. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I would like you to to understand that uh, what we are studying here, the principle is. The impact, right choice is rewarded. The impact on this is on self. Crime does not pay the impact, meaning to say that the, the, uh, the direction of why we're doing, uh, why we are choosing to be just and righteous is on others. And the, ner the third principle that I would like to bring to you is why do we, people respond to goodness? Because it impacts the society. The society follows goodness, altruism. People love that. But you might be thinking right now, well, there are people who follow uh, unrighteousness. I would agree, but not, they're not a lot. There are a few of them. But the majority of those people who are truly thinking, or I should say, uh, majority of those people who are searching or seeking, they respond to goodness. Mother Teresa is an example, right? We... Re we, we, we uh, we like to uh, see what uh, we like to share what what she had done, her her love, her goodness, her her sacrifice, and people. Even if you are not a Roman Catholic, you respond to to her name with a positive uh, evocation. All right, so this is what I would like us to do. Uh, I like us to remember. I mean, right choices are crime does not pay. People respond to goodness. Let's go to the second outline here. Let's go to this is. Um, you can find this in Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 to 14. I just limited that. Uh, limited, I mean, to those verses. All right. What are the benefits of living a life of honesty? Ooh. You know, before my father died, he, I could remember his uh, admonition to me. I want you to die that people will remember that you're an honest person. Who's the most honest person that you could remember? I could remember one again, Abraham Lincoln, the honest Abe. Have we been living an honest life? For you, it's question mark. <laughs> Did you just wink at me? <laughs> yes. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we would say two 
shed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, because the Bible is very clear. What is the one that we are dealing with? Honesty. We like to we like to be honest. Right? We heard a word. Honesty is the best policy. But there's a song that a secular song. Honesty. <laughs> Okay, Bing, continue. It's such it's a lovely word. <laughs> it's such a lonely word. I remember in the ancient time there was this great orator who was bringing the I I don't I forgot his name again. He was bringing this lamp on a broad oh, daylight. Diogenes. Huh? Diogenes. Something. A Diogenes. Yeah, yeah, Diogenes. Thank you. He was bringing this on in Athens. He was bringing a lamp on daylight, and people said. Hey, what is this philosopher doing? Is he crazy? And he was asked, what are, why are you bringing a lamp on broad daylight and looking for an honest person? <laughs> what does it imply? It implies that what? No, nobody's honest. <laughs> because what's the opposite of honesty? It's not dishonest. Well, it's dishonesty, but it's lying. Oh, it's not equal. Oh, it's not equal. It should be... <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. So the opposite, I don't know what's the opposite. Uh, <laughs> like twelve. Okay, this one is the opposite like this? Yeah. Or, or okay, <laughs> oh, he, wants to, he wants to say it. The opposite of, be sure you, you write in a way that everyone could see it. <laughs> That's the really, is that it? No. That's opposite. No. That's opposite? No. Okay. But whatever it is, it's the opposite. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you get it. I don't have to say much much about this, but we all get it. Are we living a life of honesty? The opposite of that is lying. Oh boy. Uh, how many times are we trying to cover up with lying because we don't want people to know the unrighteous deed or act that's, or that's word. That's the problem. What do, you, what do you mean problem? That's the problem. I did not hear anybody telling me a problem except you. Yeah, it's, it's the people. That's the problem of the people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, <clears throat> I'm impacted by this when I was studying this lesson. How true that a person's reputation could be destroyed by just one slight, not true, unfounded. But this is a lesson for us. This is a lesson for us. Sometimes when we hear people, they are probably, they appear to be well-meaning, good-looking, very sincere. Uh, come here, brother or sister. I'd like to talk to you about, uh, you know, brother A or B. It's like this. What is the natural response of those people receiving the message? Oh, their minds are... Really? But if you're a just person, you think differently. You listen, but you don't take it until you see the facts. Or investigate or discover the facts, if you have time. Most of the time, I notice that those people who are reporting, sometimes... They are reporting of something that they themselves are doing. And they are trying to justify what they are doing by pointing to other person, to the other person. Hey, look at him. Don't, but he's also doing it. So he's trying to justify himself by condemning or uh, 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 lying about others. I would just use the word lying or... Uh, blaming it on others or projecting. projecting or destroying the reputation of others slander in a sense how many of how many of us here that there are good people in our church in the minds of others they have been colored differently they became bad and i see that i hear that as a pastor that's why if if someone comes to me and tells me bad about something i'm i'm, I'm scared because when I turn around, guess who he, he or she will talk about? Me. You know, I like, I like the sermon today. Amen. It's about seeing with a clearer eyes. So, yeah, I, so don't wink when you're... 
causes yeah, trouble. Yeah, that's a, they said it's uh, if you cannot say anything good, just keep your. We have been, shut. you know, the sermon today has been being uh, is being talked and and preached for so many times. Well, uh, how long we've been here in Seventh Day Adventist Church, and everything you heard, everything, and still the same. How many? How many years have you been walking with the Lord? But you have to be realistic what is going on in our church, you know. Well, the word realistic yeah. could also be applied today, and today yeah. is what we need to be prayerful, praying for others and praying for ourselves. That's why I said uh, if you if you cannot say anything good to another people, you just keep your mouth shut. That also that is also a boomerang. You know what is a boomerang? Mm -hmm. When you throw it, it jumps back to you. Yeah, so we apply it to ourselves. Because we cannot change the other person's style. If, if it, it's also two sided, I think we should not be allowing people to think for us. Correct. We should think for ourselves. If somebody right, gives right. me gossip, I'm going to challenge and have a healthy skepticism towards what he's trying to say. Exactly what I'm saying. And, and then, you know, if, if I can promote it, like last night when we had their small group, uh, there was a very, very nasty classmate of one of the kids. Uh -huh. And we just said, hey, it's your opportunity to pray for one guy. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get back with him and don't, you know, don't try to retaliate, but pray for him. Right. That's, that's, uh, so. Amen. Let me read to you the Spirit of Prophecy quote here that I liked. Lying lips. Mm, are an abomination to God, to Him. He declares that into the holy city, there shall in no wise enter any that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination. Wow, this is a strong word. Lying lips equals abomination? I thought abomination is... We know that all yeah. the time. <laughs> or make it a lie. Yeah, that's... Let truth telling be held with no loose hand or uncertain grasp. Let it become a part of the life. Playing fast and loose with truth, meaning to say fast and loose with truth, and dissembling to suit one's own selfish plans means shipwreck of faith. He who utters untruths sells his soul in a cheap market. His falsehoods may seem to serve in emergencies. He, he or she may thus seem to make business advancement that he or she could not gain by fear, fair dealing, but he or she finally reaches the place where he or she can trust no one. The lying person. Himself a falsifier. He has no confidence in the words of others. So if you, if you encounter a person who comes to you trying to destroy others, be, be wary, be watchful. That person probably does not be, even believe in what he or she is telling. That's a lesson. That's a lesson. So, how do we live an honest life? Let's go to the to the blessings of of doing good. What are the blessings of the doing good? Growth. What is growth? You're learning. This is character formation. Character. Growth. You're you learn by either by pain or by uh, other people's correction. You learn. You learn through suffering. Would you agree with me that suffering forces you to learn and grow? Do you know that criticism can also force you to grow in your spiritual life, in your faith? That's what the Bible says. All right, let's continue. What are the blessings of, of goodness? Huh? Increase faith. If you're habitually doing good, your faith is practiced and you are increasing your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want to increase your faith? Continue to do good. Goodness. And what happens to goodness? It becomes what? Godliness. And you know what, friends? I found out in the book of Proverbs 11, godliness is eternal. Eternal or eternity. Meaning to say, if God sees godly people, it's time for Him to come. Mm -hmm. What is our greatest need in this world? What is the greatest need according to the spirit of prophecy? The greatest and uh, the, the, the most urgent of our needs is for us to have true God 
godliness in our church. Far beyond revival and information, meaning living a life, why, honest life. That's why Jesus doesn't come yet because we are not godliness. Uh, when you say we, are you referring to all of us or just yourself well, and others? I don't know. I can't tell for others. No, just, uh, I cannot just, tell for our viewers. Just, this is just my words. That's all. Okay, that, that's your word. <laughs> all right, let's now go to the third part of our lesson, Becoming Righteous. How to live blessed and a life pleasing to God. Let me uh, repeat that. How to live a blessed and a life pleasing to God. Do we all agree that we wanted to please God? Oh, yeah. Could we please everybody? No. no. Have you learned that lesson long time ago or you just learned it now? No. Long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still doing the same thing, huh? In school, in, we learned this. Yeah. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So if we're doing the same thing all over again and we're expecting that the same uh, thing will happen, we're insane. We need to change. That's right. Becoming righteous. How to live a blessed and a life pleasing to God. The first one that I suggest is this. The first one is receive instructions. How many of us loves to receive instructions? Woo. <laughs> you know, when, <laughs> when you buy, I was buying this exercise mas machine from Amazon.com. You know, I... I tried to go, I tried to be, because I'm, I'm, I'm having two classes on uh, Fuller Online this quarter, so I said I need to be very efficient. I can't go out and shop anymore. I need to read. I have a lot of books to read, and sometimes I forget many things, even the books that I read. So I shop, not in the store, so I shop online. I got, I got this exercise machine because it's winter. It's hard for you to, 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 to jog all the time with the, the cold, especially when it uh, dipped below the, 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 the zero, and wow. So I bought this uh, uh, motion um, uh, machine for, you know, it mimics your motion that you're walking or running. Like, there's no handlebar because it's cheap. If you buy the, the one. <laughs> so I, I would just do like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just cheap, so. <laughs> you don't have to buy that. And the first thing that you will, that you will observe when you, when you, when the, the FedEx or the other delivery guys uh, or gals or, Whoever deliver, why, why am I saying FedEx? DHL and other, yeah. they would bring it to your door, and you will, you will, you will take the box right into your house. When you open it, guess what's happening? You want not to read the what? The instruction. The instruction. You want it to be quick. You want to use it. Yeah. How many of you here loves the manuals? <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't use the manual, what happens? You can do it without manual sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, but it, sometimes it's not correct. No, no, it's not that you cannot do it. It's not that you cannot do it, but it's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, how many of you here likes to read the manual? Nobody likes. To, even your TV. Do you do you read the manual? No. no. You're but new you, you need to. Read it. But you you when need you to. Install it. Yeah, but how many of us actually reads the instructions? Because we, we, you know, we yeah. have to. Yeah. Because you don't know how to install it. Yeah. But some people think they know how to install it by the looks of the the parts. Yeah. They're gifted, but sometimes it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you saying? Receive instruction. Let's read Proverbs chapter eight, verse ten. This is give you a background of this. Proverbs chapter eight, verse ten. There are scholars or theologians or preachers who are saying this is, this is um. A Christological chapter. I would say uh, pre messianic verses that we read. So I'm choosing some pre messianic meaning referring to Jesus in the future, because this is written before Christ. Or this is Christological Proverbs, meaning they're identifying a figure, a messianic figure. Proverbs chapter 8, uh, verse 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 10. The Bible says, and I read, Receive my instruction. Whose instruction? God. And not s silver. Okay. Make a choice. Hundred dollars or instruction? <laughs> silver. <laughs> you, have a, you have a difficulty choosing. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice? Go. 
it 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 has a little bit of crescendo. It's testing you first to the to the lesser uh, value, if you will, you know, if you will get it. Like it's like a barter. Okay, will you choose instruction or silver? Uh, silver for brother Cass, <laughs> not I. Instruction for brother Cass. I I mean. Well, then if I can do without this instruction, I'll get the dollar and I'll get the silver, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, So, so Cass is, it depends. Yeah, it depends. But the Bible is very clear. Receive my instruction. Not and not. Well, it's uh, unconditional. Well, it, and this is, uh, we, are, uh, we are talking about the spiritual things. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> also in the material thing. And, and knowledge rather than choice gold. What is knowledge, by the way, in the, in the previous uh, lessons that we discussed? Wisdom and knowledge. The fear yeah. of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. It's to hate evil. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hate evil. But sometimes, this is, this is the caveat. There are people who cannot tell which is evil. So they cannot hate. Because the, the evil is disguise. Because that's the work of the devil, deceit, deception. Remember you are telling me during the time when we are having our lunch? For two weeks, I praise the Lord for Brother Terry, no TV. No TV. I, he, the ten days of, the first day of, per, uh, of prayer was, uh, he remembered it. Uh, uh, is that the first day? No, it's not the first. During this, uh, one of the ten days of prayer. And I remember I told you if you can fast, if you don't like to fast with food, because we need food to work, right? You, could you could you live without food for let's say one day? Yes. Okay. Two days. Yes. Three days. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> are you sure? Diabetic. Some, <laughs> some are skeptical. If I have water. <laughs> All right. If we cannot fast by way of uh, fasting or giving up food, I said. Fast by not watching TV, not eating chocolate or sugar. Why is it that I, I said that? Is because the mass media in TV. I'm not saying all of all of the programs in, on TV are bad. It's hidden. It's mask. What are what are being projected on mass media? Hmm. Has just three main themes: oh, sex, yeah. violence, and uh, murder. That I think it just, you know, even the drama. Money, money. Or money or something. Stealing, so, stealing money. Uh, if you're affected with those things, you, you should not watch TV. watch TV. So you're not affected? No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just for entertainment. Okay. Inter so wow. But, <laughs> but uh, what? So your I'm entertainment. Doing what they are doing. Your so entertainment is spending time on that tube? By the whole thing. You become changed. So what you watch, That's instill in you. Because yeah. evil is not projecting as with long horns and tail and a fork and a fire. No. it's use, He's using beautiful people, uh, you know, handsome you see, or you pretty. You the beautiful, Coca -Cola. beautiful people also around. <laughs> what? You, you should not, even the, just around you. They're you beautiful people. Of course. Of course. What is the difference between the TV and uh, you the dress? No. We have dress, minutes. their choices. Well, okay, okay, yeah. Look at, look at Let's, our church. Yeah. Receive instruction. Proverbs 8.10. The third. <laughs> uh, the second, I mean. <laughs> because we're rushing. Yeah. Yeah. Do right. We're asked to do what is right. Proverbs 8, verse 13, I would like to read. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way. Meaning to say, and the perverse mouth I hate, says wisdom. Perverse mouth, meaning even cursing, slandering, bad words. Wow. Yeah, amen, hallelujah. And then the last but not the least uh, that I would like to have uh, have us think about is keep wisdom. Now I have to just underline who the wisdom here is. Wisdom. Let me let me let me read the the, the verse in Proverbs chapter eight verse twenty three, and this is the anchor of what I'm going to say. 
I, that's wisdom, I have been established from everlasting. From the beginning, before there was ever an earth, referring to the creation of the earth. That was Jesus. It's a messianic, Christological, pre-messianic, Christo Christological, Christological verse. It is not enough, Ellen G. White would say, to make a profession of faith in Christ and have our names registered on the church roll. Whatever our profession, it amounts to nothing unless Christ is revealed in works of righteousness. Christ is revealed in works of righteousness. Christ Object Lessons, pages 312, 313. The, the previous uh, quote that I, I missed to uh, acknowledge is from Ellen G. White, White, My Life Today, page 331. The greatest deception of the human mind in Christ's day was that a mere assent, a mere assent to the truth, constitute righteousness, pharisaical. In all human experience, a theoretic, theoretical knowledge of the truth had been proved to be insufficient for the saving of the soul. The darkest chapters of history are burdened with a record of crimes committed by bigoted religionists. The same danger still exists. Many take it for granted that they are Christians simply because they subscribe to certain theological tenets. But they had not brought the truth into practical life. Practical life. Men, may, men or women may profess faith in the truth. But if it does not make them sincere, kind, patient, forbearing, heavenly minded, it is a curse to its possessors. And through their influence, it is a curse to the world. The righteousness which Christ taught is conformity of heart and life to the revealed will of God. Desire of Ages, pages 309, 310. Jesus Christ, keep Jesus Christ in your heart and your minds today. Do you have any questions? For a few moments, let's. So this is this is the uh, outline that I would like to share with you at this very hour. We have a, about a few more, <clears throat> maybe five minutes to have a little uh, discussion and uh, addition to not only for us here but also for our leader uh, readers, our viewers worldwide. So. If you have anything to say, um, say now or hold your speech uh, forever. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> uh, let me hear from the other uh, people. Uh, does this make it clear for all of us, the, 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 the things that we uh, discussed this afternoon? Yes. No question. Um, on your first the biblical principle I don't see there God being glorified um, because you have self others in society so how, how do we uh, apply that as okay. whatever you get to drink do it for the glory of God instead of glorifying self others in society yeah. I think our main motive should be glorifying God instead of just hating evil to glorify yeah. God we hate evil Oh, we, we do those good, good things not for ourselves, but ourselves is glorifying God. Self is glorifying God by doing what is right. Because the source of right, the source of wisdom, is God. So God commands us to do it. And so therefore, when we obey, guess what? It benefits us, but actually it glorifies God without saying it in the text. It implies that we glorify God by being obedient. Amen. Because when we are healthy... Guess what? We may not say we glorify God, but who is glorified? It benefits ourselves but that we are healthy. But guess what? We obey God's word that says in 1 Corinthians that the body is the temple of God. Right? So we glorify God in terms of obedience. But this is not to mean self-centeredness. This is what God wants us to do. Love others as you love yourself. You know, that's His command. We, it's not evil to love self. Self-centeredness or egotism is evil, like you're always the center and not Christ. This, this is something to do with, you make the right choice because the source of right and the command to do, uh, to do this is God Himself. Yeah, the, first, the first verse of chapter 10 in Pentecost, that 
if a wise son makes a glad father, yep. the foolish son we read that. makes a sorrow to his mother. Which means if you follow all these principles, you will make your father glad. Not only earthly, but so, heavenly so father. Worship, uh, the key text in worship is delight yourself in the Lord and give you the desires of your heart. Yes. So if you make uh, make the Lord delighted with what you do, in essence, that's uh, Glor great worship. Yeah, glorifying God. Thank you for the question. Who else? Yes. Is blessing synonymous to give or give is a product of blessing? Did I answer today? <clears throat> the Hebrew thinking, when you're blessed, it's a gift. Remember Joseph's, uh, Jacob blessing his children, giving them also some material gifts of, of, of not only pronouncement, but uh, valuable uh, gift, whatever it is, spiritual, material, physical, and, and social. So um, I think that is the root meaning of blessing. It's a gift of God. It's like grace. Could you say grace is a blessing? Yes. Sure. But what is grace? Grace is a gift. Grace is a gift from God. It's free gift. Jesus Christ is a free gift. Yes. What we can do is respond positively. Lord, I want to keep Jesus in my heart. I want to do right. I want to receive instruction. Meaning, even instructions from our spouses. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, right? Amen. <laughs> what? Uh, I could see uh, Brother uh, Cass jumping out of his chair. <laughs> yeah. He's saying it's going a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> yes, receiving instruction from other people. I agree with that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Any more questions? This reminded me of a story about the sprinter repair shop. So they, the hung guy brought the sprinter. And uh -huh. uh, the guy said, why don't you go home and try repairing it yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, so you wonder, is that your policy? You will lose business by doing that. On the contrary, sir, that's the way we have business. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they go home, they break the printer some more. <laughs> they don't follow the instructions. Yeah, yeah. So these are the principles on, on, on our lesson for this, uh, for this week. So the principle is always good. And the blessings and the benefits. The problem is how you do it. That's why we become okay. by beholding Jesus. Yeah. The problem is it's impossible, guys. How do you make it possible? With God, nothing is impossible right. yes. in terms of salvation. That's not on me. Don't concentrate on the problem. And Don't focus on self. Focus on Christ's power and what He can do for you. Let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are grateful and thankful for this lesson that we can share with others. About the Lord, I pray that this will not just mere words that we have heard. May faith come from hearing. May it um, go, go down into our hearts and translate into our hands from the heart to the hands and that we can apply this in our everyday life thank you lord for your peace and for the wisdom i pray in jesus name amen, amen.